Since I haven't been able to find any reclaimed windows in my area that are small enough for the project that I'm doing, I'm going to make my own double pane window from these two pieces of glass. Uh, they cost me five bucks, uh, and that was only because the store had a five dollar minimum, so I bumped it up from four and just put some money in the uh, in the charity bin there. So this is what I'm starting with, and I'm just going to use some scrap wood that I got from free at the lumber yard that they didn't need and see if I can make a window. Okay, so here we have it fitting together. You can see that it's got basically a frame that fits slots like that, and then a little rail to keep the glass in. So the good news here is that the glass slots in perfectly. Now, let me just see if I can show you that. Let's take this away. And you can see that the glass is in fact right in there. So this is the basic idea for the window. These spacers here, basically, put a gap between the two panes of glass. And then once this is all in, an, another strip will go along like that and is just nailed straight over top. And that'll basically keep this in. That outer trim will fit over like that. Okay, so I've basically just taken the base frame and put it together and I'm going to glue each of these joints together. Okay, so I've let the glue dry, and I wasn't quite happy with the bonds that it created, 
So I put four screws in the corners there to help with that. The other thing I'm not happy with is the quality of the joints. They don't quite line up. This isn't flush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just rip the whole thing down on the table saw. I was thinking about painting it, but even though I made some mistakes, I still want to go with the, what the wood look is. So I've got this Minwax stain here. The name of the stain is Provincial, and I'm just going to do a coating of all the pieces. overnight and it's time to put the first pane of glass in. So to do that I'm going to put some silicone around the edges and then drop the, gap, the glass into place there. So it's time to put some silicone down on top of this spacer here, and then add the second pane of glass. Okay. So here's the window with the trim glued down and drying. This bit right here I had to trim because that bit was just a little bit too long, so I'll have to go back later and restain that part. So just to further secure this down, I'm going to put in a few nails, just little teeny face ones right like that'll go straight in like this. is a model that I've made of the entire design on SketchUp. I based it off of the original build and I've been modifying it as I've been going along. This window is the exact right size. And if we zoom in here, you can see that I've had to put like this little teeny quarter inch uh, frame around it to make it fit between these studs. Because of the space confinements in that window frame there, I'm going to have to use the thinnest plywood that I have to make the frame, which isn't ideal, but it's going to have to do. So I've just ripped down some boards to two and a quarter here, uh, and this should be, because the window's two inches wide, that gives me a little bit more space on the inside to build a, a stop and a lip and all that. So two and a quarter it is, and now I need to cut them to the right length. So I've just done a brief rough fitting here, and I think that this is probably going to work out fine. So here's how I'm attaching the frame together. Basically just put a bead of wood glue and then putting three nails through the face like this. So there we have one frame. I've just put the frame in, held in place with friction here, and I've run into a problem. This bolt here, I ground it all the way down to the nut here, but there's still not enough space for this to fit in. So I took the bolt out, drilled a hole that's slightly larger than here so I could get my wrench in, and I've put it back in. So now I just need to grind off this bit here and that should be enough. And I've also resealed this bolt so that there won't be any problems with water. Now that I know that the window sill will fit, I've added in the bottom piece of framing right here. So I've put in the frame here just loosely again to do a test, 
and it works perfectly. I've just primed the inside of the window sill here because it will be painted blue in the end. So I've just marked where the hinges are and I'm just going to chisel this down a little bit so that the hinge sits flush. Okay, I'm just doing a test fitting here for the hinges into their holes and they are recessed. That one might need to go down a little bit. Okay, so I've just made matching holes here on the window frame. So I've just done a test fitting for the hinges to make sure that the window will actually close into the frame and it will indeed do so. Well, I ran into a giant problem with the window and that is that I cracked the corner. So I'm going to take this off and try and find a replacement pane. Okay, so I'm just putting the window back together. I went out and bought a new pane of glass. I was really lucky. When I bought the panes, there was three of them, and I bought two, and they still had the last one there, so I've got a replacement for that. Uh, one thing that I really didn't like about the way it was constructed the first time was that sawdust got into it, and that, it looked bad. So now that it's broken, it gives me an opportunity to fix that problem. So I'm going to go around the outside edge here with some silicone before I put the next pane of glass on, just so that this edge here is sealed. Guess what? I got careless and used the claw hammer on the glass instead of on the wood. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just going to leave that. It's small. It's not as bad as the other one. You can't even see it at some angles. And I'm just so ready to move on with this. So the next step is just to polyurethane the window. So I've just loosely nailed in the window frame here. And I've just bumped it out so that it's level with the siding here. And I'm going to do a test fit with the real window. So we have a window. It's really rough at the moment, but it does open and it clears the door when it does so. And it slots back in there. Right now it's just not quite square, so it's not opening itself, which is fine by me. Um, yeah, that looks awesome. It works great. Opens up like that. Get a nice breeze going into the van. Okay, here are the hinges from the inside here, and they're nicely routed in so that when it closes, it does so smoothly. If you want to see an example of a nice coincidence, I've got a door stop in terms of this little rubber thing here. Basically, if this comes in, or I guess a window stop. So I've just shimmed up one side to make it a little bit easier for this window to close. This is never going to be a, uh, like a clean fit because it's going to shift and I'll be on different angles. So as long as I can get it to work, that's good enough for me. I've got one pine board going all the way across here and it looks like I just need maybe, yeah, just one more going down here, but trimmed down a little bit. Okay, so I added a second board making this top portion here complete. So to stop this top beam from flexing and to give it an even look across the top here, I've just put some shims up above it. I was about to start putting up the paneling here before I realized that I hadn't run the wires for my USB charger. Basically, I want to be able to charge my phone when I'm in bed, and I've got a wire in here now that I've just run through the styrofoam here, and then along the underside of the bed here, going back to the fuse box. I've just added another piece of paneling here underneath of the window. And it's cut to size, so it looks a little bit funny on its own, but it is the right size to be here. And then I've just drilled a hole for this cable here to come through. Okay, so the area under the window is fully paneled there. And the sides will basically be taken up with trim, so I didn't bother to do anything there. So the paneling on this side of the wall is coming along fairly well. I made a few miscuts up at the top there, but this isn't a big deal because it'll get covered up with the door trim. And I think I've only got like four more boards to go until that's complete. With the last few boards in place, this entire wall is now finished. So there's a reason why I did the paneling on these two walls while making the window. And that's because I wanted to use the scraps, the leftovers, to build the framing for the inside of the sill here. But I didn't know whether I'd have enough left over, so I didn't want to do this first. Uh, the, the paneling was priority. But it looks like I've got enough. So I've just cut one piece here that slots in here at the bottom 
and this will be slightly adjustable depending on exactly, you know, to get it level with this. But it seems like it's going to work out well. So I'm just going to cut the other three pieces to go on the sides and then to go up here at the top to frame out the inside. So I've finished putting in that pine box that goes around the window frame on the inside. This will be the window sill, the usable portion of it anyway. And as you can see here, it kind of goes right up to the blue portion, although it's a little bit rough. Like you can see here that there's a gap because there will be another piece of wood that I'm going to cut and put in here that will act as a window stop. What I made sure was that the front edge of this is flush with the paneling so that when I put the trim up, it fits evenly. So now I just need to make a stop for the window. So I've cut a test board here from the hemlock boards up here in the ceiling just to use as the window stop. So what I've done is I've cut a notch down that board so that it can go basically, this pine board is slightly lower than the window frame. So it can notch over there and act as a stop. Now all I need to do is position it so that when the window closes, it's in the right position. Before I attach this window stop, I put a piece of foam weather sealing on the end here. This will be compressed when the window's closed and seal off any drafts. So the bottom window stop and weather stripping is installed. Basically this closes right up against it, like that, and slots into place. And it's working very well. Okay, so I've got the top portion of that in as well, and it's also got the weather stripping on the other side there, which means that it's a really simple job from here on out to make the side beams and complete this window casing. Okay, so the window stop is fully completed. Like so, let's just try closing the window here. Yes. Okay, so I've just given it a coat of polyurethane and that will dry before I can do anything to it. It's also made these sawn edges here look a lot nicer. One of these eye hook latches was the only way that I could think to close this window. There's so little space. This is only three quarters of an inch uh, on the window here and glass gets in the way behind it, so latches were kind of hard to come by, so this is going to have to do. And it looks fine, it works just as you would expect. So, I made it a really tight fit, so that the window isn't moving around and rattling when you drive. And then that can go up like so. <laughs> Reach out the window, grab it. Close it like so. Now that that latch is installed, the window stays shut quite firmly and with a good weather tight seal there. This is going to be really helpful for getting light into the van when I'm able to open up the rear roll up door and have this facade open to the sun. It's going to be great in there. The trim on the outside and inside is going to have to wait till after this door is completed and put in, but that will be a subject for the next video. So until then, cheers. I'll see you in the next one. Say hi. Hi? Yeah? No? <laughs>